thinking all the way back to the Warren Ellis Forums days, did you guys think that comics would be this sort of phenomenon that it is currently? Boy, that's hard because from our perspective, the industry has contracted and we're in, we're very worried about comics right now. So it's, in, it's always interesting to me that the outside perspective is like, comics are booming, like. Wait upon you, What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Courting, and sometimes things just work out. I remember when Battlefield Five came out, and the game director was like, uh, if you don't like it, don't buy it, when he was referring to the uh, obvious virtue signaling uh, that was existing in the game. And, well, we all know how that turned out. In fact, the sales for Battlefield Five were disappointing to say the least according to ea and it appears that they've actually learned their lesson going forward with the latest battlefield as we really haven't seen much of this kind of woke virtue signaling garbage that we saw with battlefield 5. now if you aren't specifically familiar with comic books um you'll still enjoy this story uh kelly sue deconic laments the abysmal state of comics after telling people to not buy her books. This is via Bounding into Comics. Former Captain Marvel writer lamented that the state of the comic book in the state of the comic book industry after previously telling people to not buy her books. <clears throat> if you remember, this was a, a video on sci-fi. Um, comics are politics, Kelly Sue DeConnick in conversation with Sci-Fi Wire. Let's see how this turned out. Going back to October of 2017, a video that received a whopping 200 upvotes to 3,000 downvotes. This is what I'm talking about. Like when you get off of Twitter and you start talking to regular folks, you realize pretty quickly that... Yeah, it seems really loud, and it seems like a lot of people are in this whole, like, everything's political um, band camp that exists on Twitter. You go to YouTube, and it's exactly the opposite. Um, there's absolutely no support for this. If you look at some of these comments, this is exactly why manga is outselling comics in the U.S. and globally. Uh, he cares about the people who weren't born with privilege he was born with. I'm sorry, did I miss something? I didn't remember Captain America being born with super serum he has inside of him. 2017, don't buy my book. 2020, please buy my book. People are losing their jobs. Yes, problem solved. I won't buy your books. Well done. If you recall, DeConnick spoke to Sci-Fi Wire back in 2017 where she stated, and if you don't like my politics, don't buy my book. Later in the interview, she added, I'm going to make a book that I'm going to make, and if you don't want to read them, then don't read them. And I think that that's actually a fine position to have. I, I don't think that that is, <coughs> excuse me, this is what uh, a lot of people refer to as against consequence culture. I don't think that she should be forbidden from saying this, but I do think that you get what you deserve in terms of sales, in terms of pissing off your potential customers, when you spend too much time on Twitter, you think in your head that whatever you're doing, all this bashing of uh, your, the male fandom and saying that there's all this stuff broken in comic books, you think that that's the right thing to say because it gets a lot of likes and retweets. But then you realize that oopsie doopsie poopsie, the people that actually did buy my books saw what I said and listened to me. DeConnick and her husband, Matt Fraction, were asked, did you think comics would be like this sort of phenomenon that it is currently? 
DeConnick answered, boy, it's a hard because from our perspective, the industry has contracted and we're very worried about comics right now. This is the latest interview from just a few days ago. So it's always interesting to me that outside perspectives is always comics are booming. It isn't that, though. Anybody who reads comics or who follows the comic book industry uh, is pretty well versed on the fact that it is not doing well. DeConnick answered, boy, that's hard again. Faction then turned in. Fraction, her husband. I don't think I share. I think you're more pessimistic about it than I am. I understand the why of it all. But I also feel like he would then go on to discuss how comic book merchandising has blown up and how The Walking Dead and Scott Pilgrim were the biggest presences at San Diego Comic-Con. Okay, but when you have, you know, artists or, you know, the people that are selling the product, if I sold hot dogs and I was going on the internet telling everyone to not buy my hot dogs, and then I would, like, shocked Pikachu face when sales were in the tank... You know, you told a large section of the comic book buying public, not and not so subtly, that you didn't want them to buy your books. You spent all day yelling at them and berating them on Twitter, telling them that you were right and they were wrong, and that they shouldn't be following you because you wrote Spider-Man or Cat to Marvel, that they should be following you because you want to talk about politics, because that's really what you want to talk about. And you slowly eroded that relationship you had with your customers over, you know, 2015, 2016, 2017. And now we're in 2021 and the industry has collapsed. And the independent comic book industry has, you know, siphoned off maybe $10 million a year in sales, maybe more. Um, and people are fine not buying the latest Batman comic book when they have good indies to look forward to. Um, now he says fraction then stated when we go to shows now and people bring us things to sign, we've never seen. It's crazy. It's inconceivable at some level, but I think there's something cyclical in comics. It's ability to tap into popular imagination, whether it was Superman in the thirties, Batman in the sixties, you have these moments where comic book saturation everywhere. Still books, articles get written in the mainstream media with pow and zap, right? I still think maybe depending on the day you ask, my pessimism would vary. Well, I think that, you know, that's a valid point. There are cycles in terms of, you know, what's interesting and what's selling. Um, the, the, the difference is in this cycle, your industry collapsed when comic book heroes were never more popular. The comic book industry collapsed at the absolute height of the comic book industry. Think about that. It's because the people selling the books have never been more accessible. And because they got so many Twitter followers and Facebook followers because of their work with books, like, you know, that people loved, they thought that suddenly people cared uh, about their opinions on, you know, Donald Trump or, you know, other political issues. And while half of them, let's say roughly half, agreed, that's actually not even fair. To be honest, when you look at, <coughs> excuse me, politically divisive posts, right? It isn't 50-50. It's like 30-30-30. You know, 10% of people, 30-30-30-10. 10% of the people don't care. 30% of the people are turned off, even if they agree with you by you talking about politics. And then you get 30% of people who agree with you and then 30% of people who disagree with you. If you didn't discuss politics at all, you'd still have 100% of the audience that you had before you did. DeConnick would then lay out just how bad the shape of the comic book industry is in. I think I tend to be pretty optimistic, but this one, I'm worried. I'm straight worried. When asked why, she responded, because stores are closing at a phenomenal rate. Independent comic book sales are down. Mainstream comic book sales are down, except for the top three or five books are up. Everything in the mid list is way down. Numbers that used to be numbers that would get you canceled are now like, no, that's a hit. Independent books making the back of the cost, making back the cost of doing floppies is like names that should be able to do it no sweat and are going into the red on singles and not coming out until the until the trades and that worries me. 
Well, this is a rod of your own making, isn't it? Dukana continued, the other thing that worries me is that we're heavily dominated by the superhero genre and we're heavily dominated by DC and Marvel as the most successful shared universe in comics. And I have nothing against DC and Marvel. I've worked for them both. I love them both. I love both universes. I think superheroes are great. But there is no part of me that's like, I had your first album and it's great. I can love independent comics and I can love superhero comics. But I have a concern that while the industry, not quite as what it used to be, it is still heavily dominated by those two companies, and those two companies have gradually become part of the larger behemoth corporations, and corporate and comics have always been special because of the way they work in the brain, and because of the way we always have been cheap and fast and therefore innovative. So we could try things in comics before it's far less expansive to screw up in comics. Faction adds, entire management suites of Hollywood studios get fired for taking the kind of chances we take every week in comics. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's interesting. You know, they clearly understand the model. Um, but I think it's hilarious that just a few years ago, um, you told us to not buy your stuff. I don't know. There's such a huge demographic of middle-aged women who still try to present like they're 19. Yeah. I mean, in the way they talk, in the way that they dress, um, I think it's hilarious to me. Um, but in the end of the day, you get what you deserve. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.